What's everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. Now with kids going back to school, I thought it'd be a great time to learn how to make a reading pillow. Let's get started. Now a couple of things right before we jump into the tutorial. This is a project that you can embroider. Very, very simple. I'll tell you when to do that, but I'm not going to show you how to embroider. It's just another step that you can take. On top of, this is not just good for books. Like you can, for sleepovers and you want to send the kids off or anything like that, this is a great place that you can put the clothes and all that for a quick overnighter as well. So let's jump right on into the cutting instructions. As we jump into the cutting instructions, be mindful here. There are a lot of different shapes, sizes, and pieces here. So the absolute best thing that you can do is down in the description below, there's a pattern link click on that pattern and go ahead and download it. That way you have all the cutting instructions and measurements for it, because I won't be able to cover every last step here. To begin here, the very first thing I have here is a 20 and a half by 20 and a half inch square. Not only do I have a square of the fabric of my choice, but I also have batting cut to the same dimensions here. I've gone ahead and put them together because we will be quilting this, but until then, I'm going to just roll this up and put it aside. From there, I've got a 12 by 20 and a half piece of fabric here that will make up my pocket right here on the front, along with my batting. Again, this will be quilted as well. Then the last piece that I have going on right now is this will be the lining for my pocket and this nice binding edge around the top, along with I've got a four by 10 inch rectangle here to make up for my handle. I'm not gonna get into the back side of this pillow quite yet, because we'll do that a little bit later on into the video. Now, the very first thing that I'm gonna wanna start with is the quilting. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. And we'll start off with the biggest piece because that'll be the easiest one to work with. So, all I've done here, piece of fabric, piece of batting, and I've just put them together here. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can quilt this. We can do walking foot quilting where we just put it underneath the sewing machine with a walking foot and quilt all over it. We can do free motion quilting. You can do literally whatever you like as far as quilting goes. Now, if you wanna just do something really basic and generic, grab a do 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 ruler and you can just mark every couple of inches, both directions, that will give you just a nice square pattern. But the most utilized, the one that you see the most, is what we'll do here is I will mark every two inches. So let me see here. And I wanna put this on a 45 degree angle. So let's push this up here to the two inch mark. So, I've got my 45 degree line here and it's two inches away. And I can go ahead and put a mark all the way down this. And I'm using a Frixon pen, which is essentially, you can erase it with heat. Once you have that very first mark on there, you can just keep marking every two inches all the way down. And so on and so forth, all the way down. Then you do the exact same thing going the other direction which will give you a crosshatch pattern. Now, as far as sizing goes, as you can see right here on the back, I've got them about one and a half inches spaced apart. And down here on the pocket, I only have them one inch spaced apart. You can do it two inches, whatever you like best. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark everything up on here and then take it over to the sewing machine and I'll start showing you the next steps. So now that I've sewn it all in one direction, I'm going to now sew it in the other direction to give me that cross hatch kind of style here. Starting with the corner to corner. A little close up here. Gone ahead and finished up all my lines here. And now this is a great time to practice free motion. If you haven't done free motion, you've always wanted to try it, do it on one of these. It's really easy to do, just go ahead and try it. Now we're gonna repeat these exact same steps to my pocket. 
This was 12 inches by 20 and a half inches. And same thing here. I'm going to line these up nice and neat. The fabric really does stick to the batting here. I cut my batting actually a little bit oversized for this project. And same thing, mark all the way down it and go ahead and sew that or quilt that however you'd like. I've already gone ahead and done that. That way I can give you guys a really nice sampling of what that's going to look like. And actually what I did was I changed it just a little bit in all of my diagonal lines. You can see here that I did all these diagonals here in this blue. And I changed out to a soft gray to do a double kind of seam there. I think it looks cool. It gives it a little more dimension, but again, whatever you like to do, that is the best thing for it. Now, for our next step of this project, it's actually a really cool way to bind the top edge here without actually binding. And what that is, is I'm gonna grab that piece of my lining fabric. And my lining fabric, as you can see here, is about two inches longer than my pocket. The reason for this is this little cool binding technique which what it is, is you lay it down right sides together, just like so. And I'm gonna sew a three quarter inch seam all the way down. And I'm gonna be like, hey, Tiana, that's kind of funny. I know, I know, just watch. I'm gonna use the markings on my sewing machine to achieve this. Again, a three quarter inch seam all the way down. Now, as soon as you have this three quarter inch seam all the way down, it should look something just like this. Now you'll see what I'm going to do here, and I'm gonna take it to the ironing board and iron it real nice. But when I pull it up to the top here, I can now iron this really nice. See how I kind of give it a nice finger press. And I'm going to fold it to the back. And you can see how it kind of gives me this automatic binding all the way down it, which is really nice. Once I have this all ironed, I'm going to just take it back to the sewing machine and put either two top stitches or one top stitch all the way down. I prefer the two top stitch, which is one at the bottom, a quarter inch in, one from the top, a quarter of an inch in. I'll show you how I do that, but I want to get this ironed first. So that is what it's looking like coming off the iron. I was able to stretch out a little bit more. Now, I'm going to take this over and sew it. And what I mean by this is I'm going to take it right here, put it down, and I'm going to give it a quarter inch seam from the top. And if I like the way it looks, then I'm going to leave it there. If I want to add another one, you're absolutely welcome to do that. Got that sewn all the way down, and I'm liking how, it, how it's looking. So the next step is I'm going to actually sew down both sides just to secure my lining or the back side of my pocket. That way I know everything just where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna just flatten that all out. Take it in, and you don't wanna do a quarter inch seam. You want it to just be like a 1 8 inch seam. That way you're getting enough of it that's gonna stay but not too far that it's going to show later on in the project. Just an itty bitty seam, and if it's not pretty, it really does not matter because it's just to hold everything in place and make sure we don't fall off at all here. And again, it's not all the prettiest. It does not matter. It's just to hold everything into place. That way you know you have enough fabric here and you can just slide everything around. Now, what I'm going to do here is line this up with the bottom. And you can see how I have all this extra here. It's time to trim away that extra. That's a new blade too, which is nice. So that right there is the completion of the front of the bag. 
Now, if you want to embroider this front piece, what you're going to do is before you sew on these sides here to secure the lining, you're going to put in your embroidery machine, embroider the front, and then put on the lining on the back. That way, when you flip it over, there isn't any embroidery stitches. So for any of our embroiders out there, that's the step for you. If you're not embroidering it, and you're just gonna leave it plain Jane like what I'm doing today, I'm going to take this and I'm gonna set it off to the side to work on the handles. Now the handles are a four inch by 10 inch little rectangle. Now this rectangle makes up this guy right here. Now how it's done is you fold it into thirds. So I'm gonna put one right there and just give it a nice finger press. Fold it in to the center like so. Again, with a nice little finger press and fold it all the way over itself, just like that. And then we take it to the sewing machine and sew on both sides of the handle. That way we make sure it is extra secured. So you can see here, it's gonna be hard to see on camera. I've already sewn down the right side. I'm going to turn this around and sew down that side. That way I know everything is nice and secured. So just like that, our handle and the body of the bag is all the way done. So now on to the next step, which is the back of the pillow. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I really do like the envelope method. That way you, there's no zipper on the back or anything like that. But super simple to do. These cuts of fabric right here are the same piece of fabric and it is 21 inches wide by 12 inches tall. Now this will give it about a four inch overlay. Let me go ahead and show you this. As you can see here, the pillow is inside of here and it's called an envelope method when you can open them up and pull the pillow out and it only hangs over about that far. So there's not very much hangover here. And if you want to adjust that to your own likings, you're more than welcome to do that. But to achieve this, all you're going to do is on the 12 inch edge here, you're going to take your fabric, and this one I already got pre-ironed, that way it shows a little bit easier up on camera. And you're going to fold it in one quarter of an inch, and then you're going to fold it in one quarter of the inch again. That way you have no raw edge, and when you sew it down, you're just going to use a normal quarter inch seam. It's going to sew it down really nice and neat. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and do this. Now, you want to do this step to both sides. So in the end, you have two sides with a quarter inch rolled twice sewn for the backing. Let me show you that. And I'm a really big believer, guys, that if you have a project like this that has lots of little pieces, go ahead, pull out a sticky note, and write everything down and put them on your pieces. That way you don't get confused at it. That way you don't have an accident where you, because they're, they're all different sizes, but they're all kind of the same shape. So it's really easy to grab your, your 10 inch strip instead of your 12 inch strip and, you know, have a new pocket instead of a new lining. So now it's time to start assembling this pillow. I'm gonna go ahead and move this back out of the way. I'm, I feel like I'm just throwing this thing back and forth here. And I'm gonna grab all my pieces. Let me grab this here as well. And it's time for the assembly. Now, the assembly of this is super, super simple to do. First thing is orientation is important here. If you have a print that runs one direction, luckily this one's just an all over print, but you'll see what I mean here. If I put this here, it will look like this side is upside down because of the ship here in the corner, kind of looks up, upside down, although it's an all over print. As opposed to if I do it this way, it's no longer looking like it's upside down. Make sure these little things do make a difference. Now, the next step is we want to put our handles onto our bag. Now, the best way that I found to do this is first of all, you want it to have a nice 
hoop shape. If you put it too close together, then it's more of just like a hanging tag. So what I will do here is that I will measure across my um, pillow here. I already know that it's 20 and a half, which would be 10 and a quarter. And I'll put 10 and a quarter as my mark. And then just decide how many inches from there you want to go. So as 10 and a quarter my mark, I want to put it about, I don't know, two inches apart from each other. So I'll mark to the nine and a quarter and to the 11 and a quarter. It's really hard to see on camera. That way when I put these both down, nine and a quarter, 11 and a quarter, that I know where I'm putting this. I actually know how it's gonna look in the end. I'll move this out of the way. Make sure that's nice and straight with there. And I will grab a wonder clip to clip this in place before I move on to the next step. So this is what the finished project is going to look like on the outside. So make sure you like it, make sure if you want to make any final tweaks, now's the moment to do that. From here, it's time to add on, oh, that's not the piece. It's time to add on our envelope pillow. Again, right sides together here. I'm gonna put one on like this. And I always like to make things just a hair oversized. That way if I have to move things around or anything like that, I can just cut it off in the end. And then you're gonna take the other one and you're gonna put it on like so. Something that you have to be mindful of is as I'm doing this, I'm making sure I have an overlap here. Maybe we mismeasured or something. You don't want to make that mistake at this moment. Now that I have that all together, Wonder Clips is the next thing. I'm going to grab my Wonder Clips. And I'm going to put Wonder Clips all the way around this project. That way it doesn't move on me. That way I know I'm right in the right place. And I always do, especially here at Soya, all of our pillow patterns that we do, we always oversize them just a little bit to give you a little bit of wiggle room. You can always cut down a pillow to make it a little bit smaller. You can't just add things to make them bigger. So now that I have all of these clipped into place, I'm now gonna sew all the way around this pillow and you wanna put either a half inch stitch or a three quarter inch stitch all the way around to make sure you got enough fabric there. Cause this is something that I have little kids. This is something that's gonna get jumped on. You wanna make sure it doesn't just blow out the seams, so give it a little bit extra um, fabric to grab on. I'm gonna do a half inch seam just so like everyone know. I'm gonna sew it from the batting side up. I'm gonna follow my batting all the way around because that is the body of the pillow. I have markings on my sewing machine to show me where the half inch mark is. Now, if you don't have that, Grab your ruler, put a little piece of painter's tape down, or grab a seam guide, both will work. So now, something to be mindful of here is that if the envelope pillow here has shifted a little bit, it's okay. You have to realize that we are making something that's flat, that we're now gonna stuff something that's round into it. So having a little bit of movement is not a big deal. The biggest thing here though is that you wanna make sure that now we're putting in our final seam, that it is a perfect line here that we're not sewing this in like this. It'll look funky, so make sure on both sides we're lined up real nice and neat. I'm actually gonna move one of my clips to the middle here, and I'll grab one more to replace that one, and finish sewing. The reason why we don't have to leave a hole at the bottom of this project is because it's an envelope pillow, so I can now flip it inside out once we're done, because there's always a hole in the back of the pillow. Out. So. Now, the last step here is I'm gonna pull off the clips, all the way around, looking good. Now I'm going to grab a ruler, and I'm going to just trim everything up here. Now, along with trimming everything up, 
I'm gonna go all the way around. And guys, if your lines aren't quite perfect, you gotta realize that it's a pillow, first of all. So if it's not quite perfect, the pillow's gonna make it look perfect in the end. So I'm just kind of still giving myself that half inch clearance, but I'm just getting rid of the excess. Like I said, it's way easier to work with a little bit of excess than not enough. So, so that's about the excess that I gave myself. Not very much, but even still, it's enough to make a big difference. Now, from here, I've got my edges here. I'm just take my rotary cutter. I'm going to just nip off maybe a quarter of an inch. It will help with the turning of all this and making sure my points stay pretty sharp. You can use a pair of scissors too, doesn't matter. Anyways, flip this over. Now it's time to turn this whole thing right sides out. And if we've done this correctly, it's going to look just like the pillow that we want it to look like. So. So I'm going to take a second here and push out my corners. Now, I don't want them to be super pointy, so I'm going to just use my finger here to round out that edge. I'm going to go all the way around. And just like that, our pillowcase is done here. Now, I love this project because it's so easy to make, and you can add your personal flares into it. If you want to add a little bit of embroidery in here, go ahead and do that. And this will fit a 20 inch pillow, which is a very common size pillow. So go ahead and stuff one in there and even go to the store, buy your grandchildren's favorite book, stick it in here and give it to them. It'll be a great Christmas present or just a getting back to school present. Now guys, if you've liked this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and don't be afraid to share it with your friends. As always, and like I said in the beginning of the video, we have a pattern for this down in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. And all the supplies here you can get at soyaquilting.com. Thank you so much, guys. My name is Yankum, teaching how to sew like a pro, and I'm gonna go take a nap, so see you next time.